uh, I was woken from my sleep to the phone call, so obviously I was a bit disorientated. Um, when the Foreign Office said, oh, we found Michael, I was very relieved. Um, I asked where they'd found him, which was the first shock, because obviously, to my knowledge, he was nowhere near Las Vegas. And then the shocks just kept coming. They said he'd been arrested, and what for? And my world just fell apart. Mm -hmm. Had he ever mentioned Donald Trump? To Not you? once. He'd never mentioned politics in any way, shape, or form ever to me. Right. What do you think was going on with him then? We have absolutely no idea. We'd been very, very worried about him um, for the previous 18 months, but especially from June last year when he went to America because we didn't really know why he'd gone out there. Mm. Um, he didn't reveal any details of what he was doing out there. Mm. Um, and we were very concerned that he wouldn't come back. Mm. Um, you know, we didn't know why. And that was why we ultimately went to the police and the authorities to say, you know, there are lots of things that don't add up in this situation and we're worried for him. Yeah. And these uh, charges that he faces, disrupting the, this official function, illegal firearm possession after trying to allegedly grab that officer's gun. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and court documents saying he told the Secret Service he'd driven there from California to kill Donald Trump and he'd been at a shooting range the day before to practice shooting. What did you think when you heard that? I was horrified. Obviously, it's very, very scary. Um, this is not the Michael I know. Um, I just can't get my head around it, to mm. be honest. If he was here now, what would he be like? Uh, the Michael I knew was very sweet, very sensitive, very calm. Um, everybody who knew him said he was polite, articulate, charming. Um, I think his two defining characteristics, he had the fantastic sense of humour, very wacky sense of humour, and he was very loving. Mm. to his family. Um, not many 17, 18 year old boys still write their mum little soppy love you cards and things like that. He bought me a huge cuddly tiger sort of 18 months ago and wrapped a mum necklace around its neck. Mm. You know, this is not the actions of the same person. Mm. And when you heard that he'd apparently been planning this for a year, I mean, does that sound feasible? Not at all. Um, everyone is very puzzled because most people hadn't even heard of Donald Trump a year ago or certainly weren't aware of his involvement to this level. Mm. So I do find it very strange that someone who wasn't even interested in politics in their own country would go the other side of the world and then go to such extremes. It just mm. doesn't Thank make you. sense. Thank you, um, I wonder if I could ask you about Michael's long and, and pretty complex history of mental health problems, yeah. if you mm -hmm. wouldn't mind telling our audience about how... Uh, what conditions he had and how they affected him as he was growing up. Yeah, I first noticed things were a little bit different when he was about two. Um, just things that didn't seem a bit different from other children. But of course, every child's different. I was a mm. first time mum. Um, but things stayed relatively low key until he was 11. And then he changed from a small primary school to a huge secondary school where everything was different. Um, he also hit puberty at the same time and basically everything was just too much for him to be able to cope with. Um, we didn't get a diagnosis of Asperger's till he was about 13, but looking back now I understand what he had to deal with and people with autism struggle with change mm. to their environment, so he was really sort of thrown out of his depth then. Right. Combined with puberty, everything just became too much for him. Um, he started to get um, anxiety, um, depression, um, he developed severe OCD and um, he developed an eating disorder. Um, he, his health just spiralled, basically. His mm. mental health, his emotional health and his physical health. Hence, I think, having to be sectioned That's at correct. the age of 14. Yeah, he basically gave up on life because he felt he couldn't deal with it anymore. And he'd, he'd got to such a point, you know, with his anorexia, he was heading towards dying. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, yes, um, he was... Been incre I mean, not only incredibly tough for him, but also for you as his mum. Heartbreaking to watch your child suffer mm. um, and to know, you know, that they are the ones hurting themselves. Mm. Um, what do you do? So, in the end, everyone, you know, could see the state he was in, so he had to be sectioned for his own good mm. to try and get some help for him. You very kindly brought in a letter that Michael wrote to you when he was 14, and we've got it yeah. here, and... and are you OK if I read some of, of course, this for yeah. our audience? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, this, is, this is what Michael wrote to you in 2011. He was 14. Dear Mum, I am not bad or evil or naughty, and I never intend to be. I try to be polite and non-rude. At the moment, I have no death wishes or want to self-harm. 
My first escape attempt, that's from the hospital where he was sectioned, mm -hmm. my first escape attempt was intended to be peaceful and not to harm people, damage property or break the law. Any further attempts will be the same. I do not want or intend to be violent and unless I feel I am in danger, I will be peaceful and polite. I love you very much and I'm sorry I upset you today. Lots of love, Michael, with some kisses and a heart. Mm -hmm. That's the Michael I know. Yeah. That's not the person that is currently out in America. Mm. And we, can only, we can't even begin to imagine what has happened to change him to this degree. But he's clearly a very vulnerable young man. Extremely vulnerable, yes. How did he, how did he what, could you not keep him here and stop him going to America? We tried desperately. Mm. Um, we went to our local GP who was horrified. We went to local mental health services. We went to the police um, with our concerns. Um, but we were basically told because he's 18, unless you have him declared mentally incompetent, there's nothing you can do. Right. And because he is very articulate, because he is very bright, there's no way he is mentally incompetent. Yeah. He's definitely got his problems, but yeah. yeah. So there was nothing we could do to stop him. You haven't been able to see him since he's been out there. How? I haven't been able to speak to him at all. Right, okay. I know you've written to him. I yeah. don't know if you, has he received your letter? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what did you write to him, Lynn? I wrote a very lengthy letter, but I have um, just got a few bits and pieces I'd like to share with you. Thank you. Um, the most heart-shattering thing for me, Michael, was that the pictures I saw on you of TV were the most I've seen of you in over a year, and all I wanted to do was wrap my arms around you and never let you go. I always remember you saying, one day, Mum, I'll make you proud. You always did. You were special. You were my number one. I have cried so many tears for you, and I am doing anything I can to help, but it is slow going, obviously. I cannot condone in any way what you attempted to do, and I hate the consequences it holds for us all, but you will always be my son, and I will love you forever. I love you forever and always, Mum. What do you know about his detention and, and the, the conditions of his detention? Um, it's a medium secure facility, mm. but there's 1,100 inmates there. Um, he's being held in isolation 22 hours a day. Um, with no sort of obviously window to the outside world so he's really closed off from society from everything mm. um, I don't know really anything more than that right um, I know his father was able to go out and visit him recently which I was unable to do at that time as my daughter didn't have a passport mm. but he was only able to see Michael via video link right as well. and what did he say about how, how Michael seemed um, it was strained, obviously. Um, he could obviously only see his face. Um, but he said Michael seemed very bewildered, quite disorientated, didn't mm. really seem to understand what was going on around him or what the consequences were going to be. Mm. Um, so he's quite, quite dazed and confused, I think. Do you think if he had got hold of that gun, he would have carried out what he apparently was planning? Anyone who knows him has serious doubts about it. Michael is very thin, um, fairly frail. He has a tremor in both hands, so no one can possibly think that he could, could have stood a chance. Mm. What do you want to happen now? Uh, I want the fairest possible outcome for my son. I mean, obviously he attempted to do something very severe and that has to be taken into consideration, but I need to know how it's come to this point. What has happened to him mm. in the last year in America? Who he has been mixing with? You know, what has put these ideas into his head? Mm. Um, because obviously people with autism, they do suffer with sort of a tunnel vision, a single-mindedness. But for someone who's never been you know considering politics in any way to then be so extreme you know something somewhere has, has changed that but do you accept that he might potentially get a lengthy prison sentence i've been told through reading the press he faces 30 years in prison and ridiculous amounts of fines and there is no way he would be able to cope with that as i said he's a very gentle very calm person by nature and he, he would just see there was no point you know, why would he live the next 30 years of his life in these situations? So I fear, yes, he would attempt to commit suicide again. Is there, I mean, what, what do you want, what would you like the Foreign Office to do? I would like him deported so he could be back in this country so he could get psychiatric help. Right. And that way he could see the family that still adores him. Mm. I mean, he loves his little sister. He's missed a lot of her growing up this year. She desperately wants to see him. 
And yes, you know, there is no greater support than your family. But it's, tr it's treatment you say he needs yes. rather than Absolutely. punishment. Absolutely. Jail's no place for him. No, he needs, he needs help, but not, not prison. Mm. Um, and, and have the Foreign Office been providing the support that you would expect? Uh, the only phone call I've had from the Foreign Office was when they woke me up that Saturday right. night to tell me he'd been arrested. Okay. Um, would you like to see them get involved in negotiating somehow to, to get Absolutely. your son back here to, to, to potentially Absolutely. serve something? Absolutely. I mean, I, I wasn't told any, any details. I wasn't told where Michael was. I had to physically myself ring around the detention centres just to find where he was. And I find that's pretty awful that as his mother I have to do that in these circumstances. Okay. Um, I have some comments from people who are listening to you this morning. Um, Ian texts to say it would be a dangerous precedent if a person is not sent to jail just because of suicide worries. Those are Ian's words. It would send all the wrong signals. Um, yeah, I can understand that. Mm. Uh, and I'm not saying he shouldn't be punished, but I do feel that being over here in the country that he's grown up, as I said, where we can physically vid uh, visit him rather than via video link, mm. would be far preferable. And then he can receive treatment alongside that. Mm. And I've already asked you about why, why you couldn't keep him here and stop him going mm -hmm. to America, but, but Sam says, is it, is it, you know, why did the family allow him to travel if you have such concerns? Because we physically could not stop him. Mm -hmm. We went to the authorities, they couldn't stop him. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave says, I can totally understand this. My son has Asperger's, he's now 30, and it is a very debilitating condition. It is. And uh, Louis says, this is a very sad story. He should be sent back to the UK for help and treatment. Absolutely. Uh, Lynn, thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate it.